long as I hold this office. Thank you. Any other discussion? Diane, could I have a roll call, please? Sure. Mrs. Giftos? Yes. Dr. Gill? No. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mrs. Sither? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes, congratulations. And Ms. Giftos? Yes. Excellent, congratulations, Leanne. Thank I look you. forward to continuing to work with you as my vice chair. Thank you. Agenda items. Thanks, ladies, for stepping up. <laughs> You're welcome, Sarah. Thank you for saying thank you. <laughs> Agenda item 6.0, public comment on agenda items. Okay. Seeing no public comment, agenda item 7.0, superintendent's report. Thank you. I'd like to uh, speak about the November enrollment. We typically do this every month and uh, we'll just pull that screen up there and then we'll get started. I'm gonna go from uh, the top left-hand corner starting at the high school and just go to the right with the numbers. Um, at the high school, currently we have 948 students. A year ago at this time, we had 987. We currently have three homeschool, 112 remote, 100% remote, and 836 students are hybrid. At the middle school, we currently have seven 107. We a year ago had 696 homeschool currently 17 students, 100% remote 115 and hybrid 592. At Wentworth currently 610 students. A year ago we had 667. Homeschool at Wentworth is 16, 100% remote is 78 students, and with hybrid we're at 5. 132. At Blue Point, we have 197 students now. A year ago, we had 203. And again, if you look at all three elementary schools, we have 33 students K through two who are being homeschooled. And again, back to Blue Point, 100% remote, we have 38 students. And with hybrid, we have 159. Eight corners. We currently have 226 students. Last year we had 240. I'm gonna skip over the homeschool because I mentioned that earlier. 100% remote, 54 students and hybrid, 172. And Pleasant Hill, we have 184 students currently. Last year we had 204. We have 100% remote of 37 students at Pleasant Hill and hybrid 147. So if you look down at the left-hand corner, total kiddos now is 2,872. A year ago, 2,997. Again, homeschool total 69, 100% remote total of all our students 434. And our hybrid, we have 2,430. If you look at our total enrollment from this year to last year, we're down 25 students at this point in time. If I could go on, if that's okay. I'd like to talk about snow days. That's get that slide up there and um, so we have an LD law 2167, just as a reminder to the public that um, snow days, school days, for whatever reason, uh, they're waived until January 15th, 2021. People are wondering if that may be a, an extension into the second half of the year, and it's possible, but we have not had a word on that yet. Uh, main date DOE has required a number of days for the rest of the year. And again, um, until then, snow days, again, do not have to be made up. 
I have a recommendation. Um, I've been very concerned all fall about the worry if we have a storm, whether it's a windstorm or a snowstorm, that we're relying on people to work out of their homes on computers. And just this week, we had an outage in Scarborough. And so when I think about snowstorms, when you get you know four or five inches, I worry about one part of the town may not have electricity. The other part of the town may have electricity. And the equity issue of providing education for all students that day to be a challenge. In addition to that, I think about our staff members. Again, we're about students, but also we have staff members that work out of this district. Some travel 45 minutes to an hour to work. And I worry that if, if they're at home and they can't get to work or they can't work remote in their own town because their own town might not have electricity, that it could be um, kind of a mess early morning to try to patch this up and keep the calmness with everybody. So my recommendation is that I would suggest we just, a snow day is a snow day. Let the students go out and play, make it a typical storm day so that we just don't get in any confusion about who has electricity and who does not. I think you're lucky in Scarborough for the most part, you don't have a ton of snow days typically. You may, I'm guessing three to four a year um, so I'm hopeful that, first of all, this can be done well, and um, my, my hope is that the students and the staff, this could be a, a, a true snow day where you can um, do the fun things that you typically have done on a snow day. So that's my recommendation, and uh, I'll be happy to further talk about that, or if you have questions now, I'd be happy to talk about that as well. I, I also, Sarah's been instrumental over the, my time here, just working with her department to, to make a determination about snow days. And um, again, I've consulted with her on this. She's behind it. I know Diane is as well. So it really, hopefully, we just wanna keep people in a good place, right? So at this point in time, um, I have to say, Sarah, you have done an outstanding job with your staff this year. Just the discussions that I heard today and what she and her team has done has been amazing. So I, I think it'd be a wonderful opportunity if there's something that you wanna say, I'm not sure people really understand all the little things that you had to do this year about making this the buses safe and, and really making sure that um, our children have the best interests of, of our bus drivers, which they do. Yeah, that'd yep, be great. I think that's a great segue, Sarah. Are we moving on to the transportation update? Would you like to make comments about snow days? Yeah, I would sure. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I have a discussion about the snow days. Sure. Yeah. If we could. Um, so, it's funny because historically I've been concerned about going remotely for snow days because I think that my concern has been um, about a diminished expectation for teaching and learning remotely I, I, my pre-pandemic um, when that was suggested. And so um, to now be concerned to, about not having snow days <laughs> is kind of ironic. <laughs> but I don't know what that says, but... Um, but, but I just worry that in the time of the pandemic, I feel like the instructional time is critical um, because, you know, I think we're attempting to maximize every day that we can and, and we're, you know, we're not necessarily operating as functionally as we have been. So um, that that is a concern for me. And I was wondering what your thoughts are about that. Yeah, I thought about that too, to be honest with you. And I think it it, it's a balance with all of this because obviously um, the students are not in school as much as they typically have been in the past. At the same time, I just, I, I can't imagine at 6 a.m. in the morning trying to manage how one class or one part of a town would have electricity and the other town may not. 
particularly what I've read about outages in the Northeast, it's just been climbing and climbing every year. And so it's probably not unlike us this year to have some outages. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong on that. But I, I, I think there's a balance here and I hear the concern, you know, um, but I, at the same time, people are really working hard and, and I think it, I just put my own self in that place at 6 a.m., 5 a.m., thinking I've got to teach a class, but I don't have any electricity. What am I going to do? do? Do you have, Sandy, any information about outages historically from surveys? Do we know the data of if? I don't have that. Okay. I don't have that. I, I did read up on the Northeast, though. I mean, it's really on the increase percentage wise the number of outages that they've seen in the last 10 years. So, um, again, it, it, we may not have any outages, but I'm just trying to be a little proactive with this. I mean, I understand, oh, I recognize that. They're all valid concerns. Then my, I guess my last question is to you, April. Um, it, he's giving us a recommendation. Is this something we're voting on or? So it's a non-action item for tonight. If the board, if that's something that the board wanted to vote on, we would need to put it on our future agenda for as an action item. Um, in that we're in uncharted territory here in that it's always been the superintendent's discretion to call snow days. And so if Sandy were to call a snow day, defining what that snow day looks like, um, we've never, we've never had that discussion. Um, and, and who's ultimately whose decision that is. So I think that the board should ultimately vote on that um, is, is my opinion. Okay. Um, to, and I, I'd like to hear the, a, a discussion about it if we could put it back on the agenda um, and give the public an opportunity to um, comment and, and participate in that discussion. I would feel really good about it. I mean. I, I see the validity in your recommendation, um, okay. but people may have different opinions. I can take that under advisement. Sarah, did you want to say a comment? I was going to ask the same question that Alyssa just ended with, just around what our action is here. And then I think I agree with putting it as an action item for an upcoming meeting. What I would um, ask from you, Sandy, is in addition to just collecting some more data on outages, is just to get some feedback from teachers and, and staff on what they think about the recommendation. Um, and then the only other thing I would ask you to consider is, is whether it's something that we actually have to make a decision on now or, or, or if it's something that we can say, uh, you know, sometimes when we call a snow day, it's not really even that bad of a storm. We just know maybe it's going to be really heavy in the morning during the, the bus routes and, and commuting. So there could be no outages, right? And then other times maybe it's really bad and there's a ton of outages. So maybe we just add that as a, variab a variable into considering whether or not it's a full snow day or kind of a, a, a remote school day for everyone. Um, and, and, and in which case we wouldn't really need to make this decision. We would just need to define the criteria for, for calling what type of snow day it is, I guess. Good. I think um, this is certainly, the board has expressed an interest in, in bringing this topic up again. Um, I think it's good to give the um, community advance notice that it will be an action item if there are people who would like to speak to um, it on a future agenda. And so for now, I will I will mark it down as something we would like to discuss more. Okay. Sarah, would you like to take the podium? Thank you. So I am Sarah Redmond. I'm the director of transportation here in the town of Scarborough. And I would like to say, Sandy's right. I have a great team of bus drivers. We've stepped up, they've done the impossible, which we thought was gonna be impossible until school started, all unaware of how things were gonna go. So this is what my team is doing. Every bus has been equipped with a hand sanitizer. As students get on, they hand sanitize. We make sure they have masks. They sit in their assigned seat. We get to school, 
they get off, they again re-sanitize their hands. My drivers have been doing their routes. Every driver this year has technically four different routes, cohort A, high school, middle school, cohort A, K-5, and the same for cohort B. We've kept track of all the students and where they're sitting on the buses as required. They sanitize their buses in between the runs at the end of the morning runs. All buses are again wiped down, <coughs> excuse me, and they're vacuumed. We go out and we do our afternoon runs. Again, the same goes into play. The kids hand sanitize, they have their assigned seats and they sit down and they're taken home. Difference at the end of the day, buses are vacuumed, but we have staff that have been trained to use the electromagnetic machines. So every day from 4.30 to 6.30, all of our buses are sanitized. Equally, it's probably a little over the top, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Drivers have extra boxes of masks in their, in their buses. They have gloves, anything a student may need. There's been a couple of occasions where kids just forgot their masks. They're running late. And instead of having to say to somebody, I'm sorry, we can't transport you, we hand them a mask and we can bring them to school. So they have, they've stepped up during the day. We have a lot of um, no field trips, but the drivers are doing a ton of work transporting all of the students needs, whether they have to come to school for an hour here, an hour and a half there, they come in late, they go home early and they do it. No questions asked. It's just this repetitive. None of us knew what was gonna happen, but I, I will say this has been a really strong, good year for all of us. Bus runs have been combined. We don't have the full staff that we need at no one's fault. They've been combined. Parents have been amazing with taking their kids, amazing when we call them to say, hey, sorry, but we have to change your child's bus route. Here's the time. We've avoided doing robocalls, myself, and I have a part-time secretary that works with me, Lisa, and we call the parents ourselves. It, it just seems more personal. The parents seem to appreciate it more. You know, we've added kids every day. We're adding kids now. We're only transporting about 30% of all the kids that are enrolled in Scarborough, <laughs> which is keeping our buses safer. Kids are spread apart. We have a couple bus runs that are almost at capacity, which recent circumstances seem to have affected those. We have some other things that are coming up, um, you know, and, and those play out differently. So, you know, just a few more points of information. Thanks, Diane. Sarah, go ahead. Hey, Sam. Um, I mean, we, we established that it's, it's not really our decision. I guess I, I agree with the, and I appreciate you being proactive. I think there's a way to be proactive and, and uh, while not making a decision right now. I'm, I don't really understand, if I'm being honest with you, that just the two days and not the whole week. I think if our cases are high and we're doing it for safety reasons or, you know, we're worried about staff, then we should probably just call it for the whole week. Um, and I, I, I share similar concerns to Alicia about the equity with the, the two different cohorts. Um, that being said, I guess I don't see any negative of asking everyone to go home for the holidays, planning, like take everything home with you, plan for the case that in January, things could be worse than they are today uh, as they are trending across the entire country. So we all need to be planful and make the decision closer. Um, I, I think 
you know, assuming that people are going to go away and, you know, create more exposure is maybe a fair assumption, but we just don't know that right now. Um, so I, I guess I, I would prefer us to ask people to be proactive and plan, but not necessarily make the call until we have more information. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I'm going to chime in with just one thing that I'm kind of hearing um, that I don't want to get lost in the point that Sandy made, and by all means, correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the reasons for that Monday and Tuesday being so critical is to allow time to, for parents and staff to have someone to call on that Monday and Tuesday. So the problem that we had when we came back from Thanksgiving was that a lot of people had questions or had been contacted by the CDC or needed to talk to the nurse for one reason or another and couldn't do that, couldn't, couldn't even, the nurses couldn't even get back to people fast enough. And the central and the front office staff was, the phone was ringing off the hook. And so to be clear, they would all be back at school and they giving the students remote, the students and teachers remote days on Monday and Tuesday would allow the support staff and the nurses time in their regular buildings, picking up their phone, answering all those questions, making sure that they have some time built in to deal with the onslaught of people returning from a vacation. And so, yes, partially it's because we anticipate cases being higher and we don't know if people are going to need to be quarantined, but we, we don't know what we don't know until the nurses can answer those phones and they can't do that until Monday. Yeah, but shouldn't the staff members be relying on their own healthcare providers, not the school nurses to answer those questions and the parents that have students who shouldn't be at school, the kids shouldn't be at school anyways. So, I mean, the, the, the people that are being impacted by this are the kids whose families have chosen for their children to be in person who think that their kids need to be in person. And that's, that's, that's who we're disadvantaging by, by this decision. Um, I'm going to ask that you please raise your hand, but the, I'm sorry, can address I address what you my, said. The clarification, April, I, I, I just saw that you, I mean, how, how is the discussion going? Because you were responding to and clarifying. So it sounds like it's a conversation. If we're going to have a debate back and forth, then I think that the chair- Alicia, I don't have a blue hand to raise. And so I would have raised my blue hand and inserted myself into the discussion. I don't have that feature. Okay, so that's your one time talking for the night? No. I'm just trying to clarify how, how we're going to do this so that we have a established protocol because I don't think it should be. I don't, I don't hold each board me. member to only speaking one time. I've never done that. Each board member is allowed to speak when they raise their hand. So I should have said, this is me raising my hand to address a concern that I felt like was permeating the conversation. Nick, go ahead, please. So I'm, I'm going to echo um, parts of what Alicia said earlier, but also I agree with what Sarah said. I, I think that as I look at the window for, so the time it takes for some before, after they are exposed to show a positive in a test is pretty wide. It's between one to three weeks, according to the CDC. So I, I kind of feel like if we start to see that Christmas is really impacting as we get closer to the week of the fourth, and I know this isn't our decision, I just wanted to say it out loud, I'd be much, a much stronger proponent of doing the whole week than just doing the first two days. Um, it, just, it just feels like a, like a more equitable thing to do. My bigger concern as the chair of negotiations is that the um, staff and the SEA didn't have their ability to meet and consult on this and discuss it if that meeting was canceled today. And I know we had this crazy 14 inches of snow that started at six and turned into what we have. Um, but I'm worried about that. I, I, I want to make sure that the staff feels that they're, they had their ability to have their concerns or support heard for this um, and to not have that, if, if I'm understanding that correctly, is a concern of mine.
Thanks, Nick. Is there anyone else who would like to make a comment before we move forward? Leanne. Thanks, April. Um, I'm going to echo a lot of what has been said in the fact that it feels as though cohort A has gotten hit a little bit more than anybody else. Um, and if there is a situation that we're concerned with the cases rising and hitting nearly 600 today is definitely rising, um, why we wouldn't just take the full week for safety and for planning. I totally respect that people want the children in school. I believe that it does benefit people to have the students in person, but it's a short term request for what may be a longer term solution to keep students in school longer. We have done a great job in keeping um, our cases lower than other districts. We haven't had to go fully remote the way others have. And I would hate for us rushing back in to create a situation where all of a sudden we do have to go red for weeks on end because we didn't stop it when we could have. Um, I love the fact that on that slide, it was a proactive approach, not a reactive approach. Having that communication come out on Friday that we were not gonna be open on Monday and Tuesday was really hard for people to find that care that they needed if they had to be in the offices. This is giving plenty of notice and I would feel more confident giving that kind of notice to ensure that our staff is safe. Thanks, Leanne. Gabby? Um, I just have a question. Would it be staff and students at home and like administrators in the building or no one at all in the building? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Um, would it be staff and students at home and like administrators in the building or teachers in the building or no one in the building? So it would be a remote time where, where people would be teaching remote. And certainly um, I would anticipate that staff could stay home or we could look at a plan where if it's more convenient for them to come into the building. But the whole idea is certainly front office people, the nurse and staff to be there to answer the questions for the, the parents. Sarah? Thanks, Gabby. So the thing that we're voting on, the late start days, has the SEA provided, have you had a meeting with them on that or would this meeting be the first time that they're hearing about this? Today was, again, we had that scheduled meeting, but obviously uh, we couldn't meet with them today. So, just so I was more comfortable tabling that and we can get to the formalities of that until after you've had that meeting and gotten that feedback. And it looks like the first one would be after our January meeting, so logistically it could work potentially table that. Unless I see Diane has confidence. Go ahead, Diane. Thank you. I, I was just going to add that um, that the Wednesday um, amendment that is being sought tonight is because, quite frankly, we're still in the hybrid mode. And because we're still in the hybrid mode, um, the, it's, it would be very difficult for us to figure out um, what to do about Wednesdays. Our teachers are really relying on that Wednesday afternoon time. Um, we did not consider that we needed to meet and consult with the SEA because this isn't a, wasn't a new ask. It is a continuation to allow them to continue with the planning that they're doing for these hybrid models. So um, I, I guess we might have looked at it differently. Okay. That's fair. Sorry. Um, go ahead, Nick. I think I left my hand up, sorry. Oh, no worries. I thought that was a new one. Sarah's was flicking on and off, so, okay. 
Okay. Any other comments or questions um, regarding the calendar? Alicia. I just noticed that um, a lot of our motions recently have been um, somewhat vague in that the chair will sort of repeat not and not not just you I mean just in general and somebody will say so moved so, and and for this in particular I just would like to be make sure that the motion is um, clear what it is that we're voting on in terms of the calendar amendments in, in our motion request. And if we can try to follow that trend in general, I think it would be helpful. April, can I jump in? I... Sorry guys, I lost audio there for a second. Um, Alicia, your point is well taken and I have been trying to um, tighten that up in terms of making sure that if um, if we have a motion that it is specifically worded. So when we, when we get to that portion of the agenda, um, we'll make sure that it's specific to the Wednesday half days. Thank you. Okay. Not seeing any other. Yeah, go ahead, Sandy. So, just help me understand because I, I know we're going through sort of a new time here. Um, school is still in session, so it. Do you really have to vote on it? Because again, what we're doing is instead of being the learning going to school, it's going to be remotely. So I don't know if it's really a change in the calendar. The calendar as printed says that we are going to be going late start on those days. And so to me, replacing a late start with a half day is a change to the calendar. I, I see that point, yeah. That's the only thing that we're voting on. Okay, okay, I, okay. Thank you for the clarification, yeah. Are we all set? Okay, great. Uh, moving on, agenda item 7.0, Equity Steering Committee update, and I'm gonna turn it over to Leanne for this. Thanks, April. Kelly, can you move to the next slide, please? Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so a lot of work has gone in from um, the communication committee. We drafted, I hope everybody had a chance to read it, a communication that was in the town's newsletter introducing the subcommittee coming forward and our intention to um, send out an application as well as an introductory letter this week. Um, we were able to meet with um, MAEC this Monday and we really talked a lot about the subcommittee um, and they made some great points with respect to the makeup, the charge and the time commitment. And we did address that within the introductory letter. Um, one of the pieces that um, Michelle had really brought forward and again, as I'm going, Kristen and um, Shannon, if you have things you want to pop in, please do. Um, this was definitely, it was a lot that we took in over the last couple of weeks. Um, one of the pieces that came forward was with a time commitment. Um, what we're requesting for folks in the application and have put it through the introductory letter is a one-year commitment. Um, it can take upwards of three years to create change. Um, or to do all of the work that is in front of the committee. That's a very daunting period of time to ask somebody to commit to, but one year felt really confident and doable. Um, and this would give people that chance to reflect, say, did I do what I set out to do? Do I feel as though I can keep moving forward? Or would I like to have somebody else come in and take my spot on this? Um, I also love the fact that it is um, connecting back to 
the um, CCI work that the district is doing. And that is um, really making sure that we've got staff members who are going through that, um, the Cultural Competency Institute that the MSMA is hosting for us, that the work that they're doing will tie back to the work that is going to be brought forward to our district. So it really feels as though we're connecting in lots of different ways and moving forward. Um, I had sent over, or April had sent over, um, both the application and the introductory letter for everybody to review. And I'm hoping that everyone had a chance to read that. And if you had feedback, now would be the time to share that. And I feel like I talked a lot. No, not at all. I'm not seeing any um, blue hands um, for either feedback. Does anyone have any questions about just the communications committee drafting the introductory letter or about the timing of the application or any of that? Alicia. I raised my hand. I just wanted to say um, thank you for all of your hard work on that. Um, I know you guys worked really hard and I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and actually April, you had brought up a point about the timing and I totally glossed right over that. Um, we're going to, we'd like to launch this on tomorrow um, with the district newsletter that goes out, um, getting that through everybody, also sending it out to staff members through another, um, through their email boxes so that they have this as well. Also going to our students. Um, we're looking to have applications back by the 15th of January. That will give us another meeting to promote this um, again with the community, make sure we're using shows, social media when we start pushing that out, if everyone can also share that broadly um, yourselves to make sure this is getting to as many people as we can in the community. Um, and then on the 21st at our next, that meeting, we'd be selecting the committee who would then take over the project and move forward. Excellent. Does anyone else have questions or comments? Not seeing any. Uh, thank you so much to the communications committee. Uh, we as a board tasked you guys with this um, at our last meeting. And I know that you really made it a priority. And not only did you make it a priority to put this on your agenda and get this important work started, but you also met twice um, to make sure that you had something that was a polished, finished um, draft that could be sent to the full board well in advance of the meeting. Um, so that we could all have the time to review it. And if we felt like it needed significant changes, we could bring those changes forward tonight. Um, I think that that's a really transparent and clear way to make sure that when we are um, trying to put forward work that really is full board work, um, that, that, that all of those um, steps that we took um, to get where we are tonight so that we can vote to approve the application, approve the cover letter as a package, um, and really get this work started tomorrow. So thank you so much. Okay, moving on to new business. Agenda item 8.1 is the meeting minutes of the November 19th, 2020 workshop. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes as written? So moved. Second. Discussion? Diane, could you take a vote, please? Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Dr. Phil? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mrs. Sither? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. And Ms. Giftis? Yes. Excellent, thank you. Agenda item 8.2 is approval of the application for the Equity Steering Committee. Do I have a motion to approve the application as presented? So moved. Second. Discussion? None other than to say thank you once again. Diane, go ahead. Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. 
Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mrs. Sither? Yes. Turner? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. And Ms. Giftis? Yes. Right. Agenda item 8.3 is 2020-2021 SPS calendar changes. I would like to present the following motion. A motion to amend the 2020-2021 SPS school calendar to replace Wednesday late start days with half days for students at all phase levels. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. Seeing none, go ahead and take the vote, please. Mrs. Giftis? No. Dr. Gill? No. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? No. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mrs. Sither? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. And Ms. Giftis? Yes. Great. Thank you very much. Agenda item 9.0 is a motion to go into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA 4056C for the purpose of determining direction and the process for the superintendent search not to return to public session. April, do we have the appointments? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I skip something? I must have printed out an old agenda. I apologize. Thank you, Alicia. Sandy, do we have appointments this evening? You have that in your packet, coaches? Yeah. 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 Sorry oh. about that, guys. I have the wrong agenda. I think what you were just as read, you know, as presented, so you would accept them. Actually, it was Gabby that noticed. I should give her credit. <laughs> Thank you, Gabby. Um, do I have a motion to approve the fall coaches, uh, winter coaches, um, as presented? I move. Yeah. Discussion? Alicia. April, I raised my hand again. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering about this coach. I saw that there were no applicants. Um, do we know if that's been um, advertised. I know that in the past we've had a hard time getting applicants, but this year it's an outside activity and um, uh, it, I'm just thinking how great of an opportunity it is for kids and um, wondering if the pandemic might change things. Yeah, I, I don't know about that, Alicia. We honest. have been actively advertising. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That's too bad. Right. Okay, so anyone who's watching, tell a friend. Um, we're, we're looking to fill some important roles. Okay, Diane, I think you can take the vote. Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Cavallonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mrs. Sider? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. And Ms. Giftis? Yes. Okay. Now I would like to make a motion <laughs> to go into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA 4056C for the purposes of determining direction and process for the superintendent search not to return to public session. So moved. Second. Discussion? None other than to say to everybody who is in, in attendance and to the rest of the board, I hope that you all have a happy and safe um, holiday season and um, we can take a vote. Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? 
Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mrs. Scyther? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. And Ms. Giftis? Yes. Okay, agenda item 10.0 is adjournment. So moved. Thank you. Mrs. Discussion? Gifton? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. On. We're all set. Mrs. Giftis? Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mrs. Scyther? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. And Ms. Giftis? Yes. Hey everybody, um, we are having an executive session. I propose we take a five minute break and I, I will see everybody at 7.55. Awesome. All right, so I'm calling tonight's meeting to order. Mm -hmm. It is Thursday, October 1st, and tonight is the school board regular meeting.
Um, so since this is a separate link and a separate recording, um, we're going to go through the uh, initiation of a new meeting. So good evening and welcome to the Scarborough School Board meeting for December 17th, 2020. Could I have the attendance, please? 